Well, hello, beautiful people. Today, we're going to look at Super Select AI, Mask AI, and Quick Mask AI. Overall, I'm still very impressed with it, but it's not perfect. Let me show you what I mean. So just to recap, the whole concept that On One Photo Raw is trying to move forward with is the ability to click and edit. So as you see, I've clicked the buildings here. I right click and put my adjustment on. I can also click on these vehicles here, right click and do my adjustments. That part I really like. So far from what I've seen, Super Select AI and Mask AI are practically the same thing in terms of masking, where Super Select, you can select things more individually. So if I look at this example, I can select the cars individually. If there were people here, oh, well, there's a person hidden over there. I can select that person. With Mask AI, whether you're in effects or local, let's go ahead and add a filter here. On the left, you're gonna see here, I have options to mask certain areas. So if I click on transport, notice that it's selecting all the transport objects in the scene. Well, most of them. And as I said before, you can go into your local adjustments here and do the same thing. If I were to click on my mask here, you see that there's an option here under Mask AI for the same things. And then you can paint in or out the effect that you're using. Now, like the previous example with buildings and roads, in this picture with skies, water, it works very well. And if you're just making adjustments like contrast, sharpness, the mask accuracy isn't as important, but usually it's pretty easy to get away with an imperfect mask and you can make tweaks to it manually. So let's start with people. Now, this is a fairly easy image for the AI of the mask to pick out. If I hover over the background, you see it's not perfect, but I can make a second click and it does a fairly good selection. Yes, it's not too accurate on the sides here. If I were to zoom in a little bit, again, this is a beta version and the overall quality of the refinement of the mask is still to be improved on. But for the most part, it does a decent job. If I were to put an effect on the subject here, it's actually more accurate accurate than what you visually see here. So don't put too much weight on what you see here at this point. Now where it becomes an issue is when things start to get a little bit more complicated. So if I hover over April here, you see that it's picking up the bench. Now I can understand the mask picking up, you know, a little bit between the hairs and under the armpit, you know, problem areas that need to be manually worked on, but it's picking the whole bench here. So this is where my concern comes in. Not that I can't fix this with adjusting the mask, but this is my biggest gripe about AI programs that they give you this high expectation that it's going to automatically do what it's supposed to, but then it does selections like this. Now you might be thinking, oh, Ermin, you're overreacting. This is just a beta version. Well, let's try something else. So I have this video of a lemur that I used in a previous video. I hover over the lemur, selects it great. I select the background. No problem. There's a little piece here that I need to select. No problems at all. Put the lemur in an environment with trees and branches. It also picks up the branches. And if you look below here, in between the branches and the lemur itself, it's picking up some of the background. If I were to make adjustment, let's say to the contrast, and I'm gonna over exaggerate the blacks and the shadows, bring them down, you see the selection isn't too accurate. Then we get an example like this where it's hit and miss. If I use Mask AI for this example, we're gonna add a filter here. You're gonna see here that it doesn't even recognize the dragonfly here. Typically, if it were, you would see it under animal. And even the background, it doesn't really know what it's selecting. And it's no different if I use Super Select AI. Like it's, the selections are pretty much the same. It's all over the place. To be fair, with this image, it selects the dragonfly for the most part fairly well. Again, I'm going to do a contrast adjustment and make it dark just so we can see what's going on here. Even though you see that the selection is picking the background between the legs there, when I hover off of it, you're going to see that it's actually very accurate. I may have to make some adjustments here on the leg here. It's super tiny. I can't expect it to pick that up. 
But in this case, it makes the selection pretty well. And if we look at the adjustments here and we go under masking, you see that it recognizes the dragonfly as an animal. So on one side of the fence, it didn't even recognize it. On the other side, it did a pretty decent job. One more example here of this woodpecker selects it very well. Background, I'll have to do a couple clicks to basically cover everything, but it does a very good job. But here we have a flower that should be fairly easy for it to pick out, but not really. <laughs> So I guess my main concern is the consistency, and this is kind of reminiscent of what we've all been through that our Luminar Neo users with the Mask AI. It's kind of hit and miss, and it's almost like you have to have binned images for it to work. I hope that's not the case with On One Photo Raw. And I can understand why certain images work better than others, but if you're gonna push the whole AI thing, then the AI should learn, at least eventually, the differences between the subject and the background and everything else around it. It's not too much to ask because it's these companies that are saying, this is an AI platform, but I'm not getting that AI result. Now, don't get me wrong. Again, I love the concept of Super Select AI Mask and where it's going, but I really hope that it's just not a marketing ploy to get users to buy into this whole AI stuff. Let's move on to the improvements made to Quick Mask. So we're gonna go to the left menu, click on Mask, select Quick Mask, and this is on One Photo 2022. And what we used to do, let's say I wanna remove the background, we're going to create a line here, which will remove the background. And we're gonna switch this to keep and just make a green line here. And then when we hit apply, it's gonna process and then it's gonna remove the background. Now I didn't do a good job here of selecting the subject, but you get my point. But now with the improvements in On1 2023, all you need to do here is decide whether you wanna paint out or in. So I've got mine to paint out and I'm simply just gonna select the background here, click done and boom, background has been removed. So this I really, really, really like. Much more quicker and easier to do. But again, the biggest thing for me is the mask accuracy. And I would say in terms of mask accuracy, Lightroom is probably at the top of the class. Sure, it's not perfect in certain situations, but in terms of edge awareness, sharpness of the mask, accuracy. I haven't seen either On One or Luminar even come close to it. And if they think that I'm asking too much from their programs, well, Lightroom is kind of the standard that we're all coming from. Most of us have come from the Photoshop Lightroom world and sometime or another began a mass exodus out of the Adobe <laughs> platform because of its subscription model. So that's why personally my standard is that high. So the whole point of this video was really just to give you guys awareness of what I'm seeing. And I wanted to have a basis to compare between the beta version and the official release version to see where those improvements have been made. For the most part, again, it works very well. I love the click edit concept, making your workflow really smooth and efficient. But you can't skim over those little details that have a lot of value to people like myself. So the verdict still out until the official release, but at least now you guys are more aware. And in the next video, we're going to take a look at the new addition in the sky swap feature with OccuDrone Skies. Until then, good people, I'll see you when I see you.